I used to be an adventurer like you. Then I took an arrow in the knee. This episode of Filmland is brought to you by Video DNA and the Arrowhead script for After Effects. Roll the thing. This video sponsor. Woo! <laughs> Hey guys, welcome to Film Learning, the show that I had to learn you some filmmaking and learn you. And we're back at the desk this time with another product review. This time we're taking on Video DNA's Arrowhead script for After Effects. Now you might ask yourself, hey Grant, what is Arrowhead? Well, I'm glad you asked. <laughs> Okay, so after that, I think we've all got the basic gist about what this thing is and what it can do. So, let's have a play with it in After Effects right now. Okay guys, here we are in After Effects and I've got a blank comp all set up and ready to go. I'm just going to hit the window and open the Arrowhead script. Now you can see that brings up a panel and I'm just going to go ahead and just dock that to the effects panel right here. Now, I want to show you just how simple it is to create an arrow here. Now I'm just going to grab the pen tool. Check on Rodeo Bezier, just so my uh, lines aren't so janky. And I'm just going to draw a simple shape. Now, that might not look like much, but if we just hit create and update arrowhead here, boom, we've now got a pretty cool arrow already made for us. Now, you can see here, if we just turn that off, we've got a few different options. We've got a start, like that, so that we can fully animate that down a mask path if we like to and we can also animate the end offset as well if you feel like going that way as well now there's also an option to offset this as well now that's see you know if you go in either way so basically the same controls as that but if we check on offset loop and we just have a bit of a play with the start and the end we can now have that chase each other so that's very cool for looping animation very cool indeed now I'm just gonna go ahead and reset that and we can start playing a little bit more so we've got this thing called head and tail symmetry now if we check that on you can see we have head and tail controls so Basically, what this does is that it just links those two together, much like the scaling controls in After Effects. So if we say to turn off the head, it turns off the tail as well. If we change the shape of the arrow head, it changes both shapes. So you get the idea. So what we might do is just turn that off for now so we can have a bit of a play. Now, obviously, with these controls, you can see that we can either turn them on or off. We can also change the arrow head type to, say, a triangle, arrow head an arrow tail, then there's one called open arrow. Now, it doesn't look like anything's happening right now, but if we go up here and we change the fill to a hollow color, you can see we now have a hollow color there. Now, I'm just gonna bring that stroke down to say one, so we can, uh, maybe two, just so we can see that, yeah, our arrowhead is now completely hollow. Now, we also have a heart and a line here, but we also have the option to import a custom arrowhead and we're going to explore that a little bit later. So you can see we also have options. If we hit polygon, we can also drop down our polygon options and we can actually change the amount of points that we have on this as well, all the way up to just having a complete circle. So we can change the radius of that in here. We can also change the roundness if we want it to be a little bit smoother, but that's it for the polygon options. Now we also have the option to change where the anchor point is. So we can designate that to anywhere we want with the targeting tool, or we can also just move it around in whatever space we want. So if you want that to be offset a little bit, here's where you do that. And obviously size does exactly what it says it does. So you can change the size if you like, 
Now, auto rotate's an option that we might get into a little bit later. And you can also change the angle quite easily. So you can just rotate this thing however you like. And obviously the tail options mirror that of the head options. So you can see right off the bat, you have a lot of options in order to customize your arrowheads at the drop of a hat. If we delete this shape layer and we draw say an even more complicated, really, let's just sort of say a stupid shape. Okay, dumb looking shape, right? But if we go into arrowhead, bam, there's our arrowhead already done. Now, if we were to say draw something like that in just After Effects itself without using arrowhead, so we'll draw this out. Okay, pretty stupid shape, but in order to actually construct an arrowhead, we'd have to go in here, we'd have to actually draw the arrowhead, and there we go. We've already run into a problem because I already had Roto Bezier on, so it's not gonna just do that shape. So we'd have to delete that, turn off Roto Bezier, come over here, draw our arrowhead again, then we'd have to obviously parent that, to the other shape layer so that it moves with it. And even then, if we want to adjust it, we've got to go in to individual controls, see, and already we've run into a problem. We've got to already reset that, grab the pan behind tool, move our pivot point over here. So you can see, if we just delete that, go into arrowhead here, and just click one button, we've already saved ourselves a ton of time and the farting around is kept to a bare minimum. But this isn't all this thing can do, so let's explore it further. Alrighty, in this next part, I just wanna show you how easy it is to animate, but right off the bat, I just wanna show you one quick thing that you can actually create an arrow out of a solid shape. So let's say grab the random rectangle tool and I'm just gonna draw this out and create a new shape layer. And you can see that doesn't look like an arrow just yet, but if we go to arrowhead and we click this, you can see, oh no, it freaks out. But you can see what it's actually done is just give me a couple of instructions to show me how to convert this into an arrow, which is actually pretty easy. All we need to do is just come into rectangle one here, right click on our rectangle path one and hit convert to Bezier path. Then if we click it again, boom, we now have our arrow. Very cool. Then all we have to do is just say change the start offset. And there we go. There it is right there. Now, let's do a little bit of animation. This is super, super easy, guys. So say we want just a simple animation loop. All we need to do is just hit the stopwatch on offset here. Click offset loop. And I'm just going to go ahead and say the two second mark. And I'll just crank this up to say 25. And then we'll just do a preview. So you can see in the space of what, five seconds, we already created this. Now, if I wanna just ramp that up a little bit, say 50, just so we've got a little bit more. Now, obviously that was super easy guys, but what happens if we wanna mess with this a little bit? Let's say grab the pen tool. We wanna just add a couple of points and just mess this up a little bit. So, oh no. <laughs> so we've taken our nice rounded rectangle and we've turned it into this jagged mess. Now you can see what's happened. Oh no. The arrow points have gone off the path. It's all gone to hell. But if we go into arrowhead and just update it, one click, bam, we do a preview. It still works. How cool is that? So we took our random rectangle shape, totally messed it up, and with the click of just one button, our animation is not only retained, but it compensates for the adjusted shape. Okay guys, so here's another example I've just cooked up. As you can see, I've just set up a stupid travel scene. I've just got an arrow Indiana Jones style traveling from one destination to the other. Now I just animated this in the exact same way that I just showed you in the previous example. And this time we're going to add some custom arrowheads. So you can see I've got this stupid little <laughs> animation here that I've got with this guy just bobbing up and down. 
and a little bit of smoke coming out of him. And then we've just got a circle here that'll just uh, define the origin point. So we're gonna add these as custom arrow points. So all we have to do is just highlight the plane, our shape layer, which is our line, and this circle here, just making sure the anchor points are in the center of these things. So we've got the center here and a center there. So we're good to go. So we're just gonna highlight all of them. One, two, and three. And then we're gonna open up Arrowhead. And what we're gonna do is just hit this one that says attach custom layers and bam. Now let's just see how that goes. Okay, so we might have to just adjust the rotation, but you can see that that actually does work pretty well after just one click. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just enjoying that just a little bit too much. So we're just going to go into Arrowhead here, and we're just going to rotate the angle here of our, our plane. Sorry, that was way too amusing for... Here we go. So now that we've adjusted that, He'll fly along the animation path just a little bit smoother. <laughs> That's not bad. So you can see after one click, I've just created something that has brought me great amusement. So guys, that's Arrowhead script for After Effects from Video DNA. As you can see, this thing will save anyone who works with animated arrows or animated mask pass a bunch of time because it's so damn easy to work with. And as you saw from the video, it's also pretty fun to play with. I didn't have to play that again, but I wanted to. Now, if you want to find out a little bit more about Arrowhead, you can click the link below to go to Video DNA's website, or you can also click the card above because they have a very in-depth tutorial and a whole walkthrough of the product on their channel. There is some features for Arrowhead that I didn't go through, including using location nulls. That can also help you add 2D and 3D effects to both the path and the arrows themselves, which is really, really cool. But for now, guys, I'm going to put a cap on this episode and say, if you did enjoy the episode, please smash that like button. I really do appreciate it, and it does help out. And hey, if you are new here, hit that subscribe button below and turn that notification bell on so you don't miss a single film learning episode. We've got quite a few effects coming up. Who knows what they could be? I do. But if you are interested, there's two other episodes of film learning right over here. I've got all my social media crap there as well, as well as the Patreon if you want to help support the channel. And hey, if you want to support us directly on YouTube, you can click that join button below. But until I see you again, guys, keep learning.